After lunch, we head back to our hotel and gather together for a walking tour with Daniela. So the Venetian ships started from Venice. They went as far as Constantinople. And from Constantinople, the caravans left on horseback, on foot, and some Venetian merchants arrived as far as China. Marco Polo, in the year 1275, reached China with his father and his uncle. And in China, he became ambassador Kublai Khan of the Emperor of China. So he traveled a lot. He knew China very well. When he came back to Venice, he wrote a book in which he spoke about the wonderful things they had seen in China. So remember that the Venetian were merchants. Uh, I think that perhaps you have read The Merchant sure. of Venice yes. by <laughs> William Shakespeare. Uh? So you knew everything about uh, They brought spices, perfume, fabrics, gold, silver, carpets. Uh, all these things were sold in Rialto, the commercial center of the town nowadays. And then they were brought to the different parts of Europe. So we are speaking the climax of the Republic was the 1500s, 1500s when Venice developed in Greece, in uh, Yugoslavia, in, uh, in Turkey too. Venice had a great colonial empire and a lot of possessions as far as Istanbul. So at the beginning it was only Venice. Some people at the very beginning that were obliged by the need to live here. Then they spread, they became rich, powerful, till the 1500s when there was the, the climax of the Republic. Then the discovery of America and the Turks that occupied the colonies of the Venetian caused the uh, a loss of power. And so we had a, a slow decline in uh, the 1600s, 1700s, till the year 1797 when Napoleon conquered the town. That's a nice brief summary of the fascinating history of Venice. We spend the morning with Daniela, so she has time to fill us in on all the details. And she gives us some tips on dining and shopping. It's pumped out. The Guild over there is dedicated to St. Mark. Uh, you know, St. Mark is the patron saint of Venice. But the masterpiece of uh, this uh, camp is the church, the church of St. John and St. Paul, Santi Giovanni e Paolo, San Zanipolo in Venetian. You know that we still speak dialect. Wonderful example of Renaissance style in Venice. You can see the false perspective on the lower part with the story of St. Mark. Mark. This is a well, and this is one of the most beautiful wells uh, that we have. The upper part is called Vera da Pozzo, that means uh, ring, uh, ring of the well. Vera because it means uh, the nuptial uh, um, ring, uh, and so for the most part it's circular. It's decorated with the putti cherubs. So this is one of the most beautiful that we have in Venice. Uh. This is a typical, can you see, with a, a typical canal of Venice with a house. To reach the house, you have the entrance on the other side, and, but over there you have to have the private bridge to enter the house. Or we have the luck to, find the, to cross the bridge in a moment when it's not so crowded. And now we are reaching St. Mark. St. Mark is the biggest square in all of Venice. It's very crowded at times. In the evening, it's very peaceful with orchestras all around it. And this is St. Mark Square, the only square that we have in Venice, because it was the political and religious center of the town. And the building that you can see at the very end of the square is the Napoleonic wing, the palace that was ordered by Napoleon himself when he conquered the town of Venice. Venice, uh, uh, it's at its best because you can see all the carpets on the on the windows. Eh? So the square is at its best. So oh, the clock tower is almost 500 years old. Restoration will be finished next year in 1999. Just in front of you, you can see the beautiful island of Saint George, with the church of Saint George that was built by the famous architect Andrea Palladio. This side of the island that you can see overlooks the lagoon, the opposite side overlooks the Adriatic Sea. 
So that's Venice Beach. You have Venice Beach near Los Angeles. We too, we have Venice Beach. Eh? And the big church over there, it's the church of Santa Maria della Salute, Saint Mary of Half. It was built in the year 1630 because we wanted to thank the Virgin that saved the town from the plague. That's the reason why we have black gondolas. The other facade of the Ducal Palace, of the Doge's Palace, you can imagine the dimension of the Ducal Palace, that's a very big palace. It is the best place of Venice to take photos of the Bridge of Sighs because it's just in front of you. Can you see to the first bridge, the white one? You can see very well the windows, uh, and so you realize that people, prisoners, passing across the bridge could see the town for the last time and they sighed. Uh, you can realize this very well. But it's, we have been very lucky because at the moment it's not overcrowded, so we can stop. But there are moments when it's impossible to stop here. It's a passage more than a bridge. It's a passage. Leaving the crowded bridge scene, we duck into a quiet alley that brings us to a peaceful courtyard and the church of San Zachariah that was built 500 years ago in the flamboyant Gothic style. They have a masterpiece, a masterpiece by Giovanni Bellini. Yeah, one of the most beautiful paintings in the world is inside here. The interior of San Zachariah is constructed in a classical Renaissance style, very similar to what we found in Florence. However, unlike the plain, undecorated interiors of Florence, there are many beautiful paintings inside this church, especially this one. So the masterpiece of this church is the canvas by Giovanni Bellini. Giovanni Bellini belonged to the Bellini family. The Bellini family was a very important family in Venice. There was Jacopo, the father, that was very important, that had a great uh, workshop of painters. And then there was Bellini. Bellini was born in 1430. He began painting starting from 1450 and he went on till the year 1516 when he died. So 66 years of painting. This is playing because music was very, very important in Venice. And the most important chapel of music in Venice was the Basilica of St. Mark that we have just visited. Later on, Giovanni Bellini was influenced by Giorgione and Titian II, his scholars. So in this moment, you can see also an influence of Titian. Tomorrow you understand much better because you you'll see Titian's masterpieces. So you'll see that the color, the red, the different colors has been influenced by Titian too. This is a masterpiece. He had the greatest evolution of painting for a painter in Venice. It was the best one. No, not the best one, the one that um, evoluted, that improved a lot because he moved from a Gothic mo moment and he reached Renais Renaissance. It's generally considered to be the most important painting by Bellini. So it's worth your while when you're at the Bridge of Sighs, you just keep going and take a left and you'll find yourself at the Church of San Zachariah.